I'll just take her to the party and get her drunk. What do you say to that? No. Oh, no. Right? That's too obvious, really, right? No, what are you thinking? Yeah, they're going to listen to you the moment you say no, what are you thinking? Oh, they're not listening to you. So what are you going to say that's going to make them listen? Would you want someone to take you to a party to get drunk? Would you like someone to take you to a party to get drunk? The answer will be? Yes. Correct. <laughs> that's correct. Yeah, so we have to be careful of that. In, in a lot of issues in this country and around the world, people think, what if it was your loved one? What if it was your... We can't go that route. People don't always trigger that way. If you say to somebody, what was your sister? Then my sister's a slut. I'm not exaggerating. People will give you that answer. So you have to be careful thinking, oh, I'll throw somebody in their family back in their face. They'll do the right thing. No, they'll throw it right back in your face. If they're going to be anti uh, anti what do you want to say? confrontational, uh, they'll throw it right back. I feel like you can tell them like, the trouble they can get into. Because okay. it personally affects them. Like, if you get a girl drunk and sleep with her, like, do you think if she could say something and you could go to jail? Okay, so uh, let's, and I love that. Hey, there's consequences to this decision. Are you aware of that? All right, and so now what I want to be careful of is how I say it. So if you get a partner drunk and have sex with them, that would be sexual assault if they're not of sound mind. All right, now we want to be careful. Somebody can drink and give consent, but not of sound mind is a different situation. So if you're intentionally going out to get somebody not of sound mind so you can have sex with them, that would be rape for sexual assault. I don't think that's what you mean. Notice how I said that. I don't think that's what you mean. What am I doing with that little comment at the end? You're basically making them like, oh crap, and then it's like, but I'm not saying that you're gonna do that. Yeah, I would never think you would do that, you're right? Which means I didn't just insult you, I did the opposite. I said, are you aware that that's what this is? I don't think you would ever do that. So I just complimented you, actually. <laughs> I did. I did. What do most people do? You'd be a rapist. That's not a compliment. <laughs> right? And you're not going to listen to that person because it sounds so offensive. And if you were raised in your cult before you got to this campus, if that's the norm on a weekend, you don't think you're a rapist. You cannot connect with that concept. You picture rapist as somebody who jumps out of bushes and attacks people. But somebody who knowingly gets drunk with me and has sex with me, that's called having sex. That's the mindset that person can have. Are they still acting predatorial? Yes. So just because they were raised to commit sexual assault on the weekend doesn't mean it's okay. You're still talking about somebody acting as a predator, as an assailant of sexual assault, committing rape. So what we want to do is help them realize that's not who you want to be. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope that you're not. Right? So they say, hey, I'm going to go out and get someone drunk so I can get laid. I'm not even going to get there yet. I'm going to go, oh, why not with someone who's sober? Why not have sex with someone who's sober tonight? That's going to be my first question. Because what do they have to explain then? What do they have to explain if I go, why not with someone who's sober? Because they can't get someone that is. Yeah, I don't, no, no one will do me if they're sober. <laughs> Okay, well, that's really low self-esteem. Seriously, that's really low self-esteem, and I think you're playing yourself way lower than you could even imagine. Uh, I don't think that's true. I think there are people that it could be the right match for you, that it could be completely sober. And they say, well, I've never found that to be true. All right, well, let's fix that. Let's work on that, right? Uh, because are you aware of what you just said before? Get you in a ton of trouble. Then they're like, because you're being so nice, what do you mean? Right? They're likely to have that kind of an approach, like, well, what do you mean? Well, intentionally, or intentional or not, having sex with somebody who's got a sound mind would be sexual assault, would be rape. And I, the last thing I can imagine any of my residents, including you, want to do would be to rape another person. If they really want to be with you, they should want to be with you without needing that much alcohol in them. So I'm just trying to help you because what you just said to me, if you actually did it, and I found out, I'd have to report you as a sexual assault or rape, as an RA in this campus, mandated reporter. I'd have to report. I don't want to ever have to report one of my residents, not because I don't want to report you, because I don't want to want to think you would ever do that. But if you did, I am going to protect every person on this campus this has ever done to, and I will report it. I will do my job. Right? And safety, what's the number one job of an RA? Safety. Yeah, it's not even a close call. Safety of residents is always the number one job of an RA on any campus in this country. Safety of residents. So I put safety first of all residents, not just the people on my floor. So if you're telling me you're going to go out and intentionally try to sexually assault or rape someone, you're a danger to this campus. 
flat out danger. Right. So I don't want to get there though. I want to get them to realize that's messed up what I've been taught. Right. And when you do this gently and you can slowly get there, you see the light bulb go off and like, whoa, that's not what I meant to do. That's not how I was taking it. See, and that's what I thought is how you can respond. And that's how we thought. I didn't think that's what you meant to project. Right? And so that's why I want to slow this conversation down. Now, could they just be a jerk the whole way through? Totally. Yes. Any gender can be. This happened to be a male example. But any gender could be doing this, by the way. Right? And their partner could be any gender, any sexual orientation, any identity. So they could be a jerk the whole way through and go, if they're just going to be a jerk the whole way through, then you do just say, look, then you need to know the consequences. That is sexual assault or rape by the way you described it. And know that you've just shared that with me. And if anybody ever came forward after being with you, I would be somebody that would come forward and say, this is behavior we saw concerned about. And I will report this to, to my superiors that I'm concerned about one of my residents committing rape or sexual assault on this campus based on a word they said. Right? Now that doesn't mean it's gonna go anywhere, but that's doing your job. You should go up to, on your campus, what do you call it? Is it an RD here? RHD. RHD. RHD, okay. So every camp's a little different. So I, I would let my RHD know I'm concerned. Right? And and what would happen then? I don't know. Now, RHDs might tell you they'd look to get them counseling if they were really a danger. They might look to have them have to talk to someone. <laughs>